So this is question 43 and 44 from the SAT number 10. And we have a fair question here. And let's jump in. So 43 says, based on the information in passage 1, which area will be least likely to be colonized by a fast-growing invasive plant species? So this question is asking for what area would be least likely to be colonized by a fast-growing invasive plant species? So the way to solve this is we want to go back to the evidence given in question 44, and we want to look for any lines that tell us about um, pretty much the likelihood in general of a species to be colonized by a fast-growing invasive plant species. And why I say likelihood in general means if we have information that tells us what makes it likely or what makes it unlikely, we'll be able to determine um, which area is least likely. Uh, that makes sense. We're just looking for the likelihood in general of an area to be colonized by a fast-growing invasive plant species. So let's look through our answer choices now. We'll just go through them one by one. And we're going to look for any of them that give us this evidence, OK? So let's look at questions 7 through 11 as our first one. So 7 says, the problems caused by such invasive plant species are the direct result of their success in colonizing new habitats and understanding why they are so successful is essential to controlling their spread. Um, this basically tells us that the problems are caused by the success um, and tells us why it's important to control their spread. But they don't really give us an indication of why certain plants versus others are able to spread so well and have such success, or like especially about specific areas. Um, so all, because it only makes the claim that there are these species that need to be stopped, it doesn't give us information why, we should eliminate this option, which means now we should go to question uh, lines 12 to 17. 12 to 17 says, although there are many competing ideas to explain invasion, it is possible that two of the most important are interrelated. The plant species that benefit from the most from high resource availability may also gain the most from the species enemies upon moving to a new range. So here, this basically just tells us that there's many ideas to explain why one species does better than another, um, but there's two main ones. The two main ones are, um, have to do with the resource hypothesis, high resource availability, and the enemy release hypothesis, escaping enemy. So, this is not really, again, telling us about specific areas and the relative likelihood of those specific areas to be um, invaded by a plant species. Instead, it's just telling us the two hypotheses that sort of give a general framework or um, a theory for why some species do better than, than others or why invasive plant species do better than the native plant species in general. But because it doesn't talk about the specific areas which we need, we should eliminate those options as well. Now we should go to questions 21 through 26. It says, hypotheses explaining the exceptional success of exotic species are based upon ways in which a species' new range differs from its native range. Fewer insects and disease, diseases, less competitive environments, and competitors that are more susceptible to chemicals produced by the invader. Um, again, we're getting sort of closer to the number that we want, because here we're starting to talk about some of the features that will explain the success or unsuccess of invasive plant species, right? Here are some of the reasons why they do well. They're less susceptible to insects and diseases, there's less competitive environments, um, etc. However, what this is failing to do for us is tell us again about specific areas, right? And just glancing at our answer choices, it's like a wetland area, a forested area, a previously forested area, a plains area. These are like specific geographical locations with certain features in the landscape. And this answer choice doesn't really mention those, although it's starting to talk about some of the features that will inform these hypotheses. Um, but because it doesn't talk specifically about uh, natural areas, let's eliminate it. Now we'll go to question, uh, it's a lines D, uh, 32 and 34. These say communities with lots of disturbance, high resource availability, or reduced species diversity tend to be easily colonized. Uh, we should see pretty much off the bat that this is a pretty strong answer to it. It's talking about a specific area by saying science communities. It's giving us the specific features that will influence the likelihood of an invasive species um, taking over that area or not. They say lots of disturbance, high resource availability, and reduced species diversity, and telling us they tend to be easily colonized. So this is definitely going to be our answer choice for 32 through 34. And at this point now, we want to go back to the question here and back to the text. We want to focus more directly on it and figure out um, 
on our own what we think the answer choice would be. So 43 says, based on the information passage one, so based on our text we chose, which area would be least likely to be caused by a fast growing basis of plant species? So the text that we chose, the text said that plant communities with lots of disturbance, high resource availability, or reduced species diversity tend to be easily colonized. We're looking for what's going to make something the least likely to colonize. So honestly, what we're going to do is just take the opposite of these three things. So we want minimal disturbance, we want low resource availability, and we want um, plentiful species diversity. So we want little disturbance, little resource availability, lots of species diversity. So let's go through the ones that are here. A says, a wetland area that was recently converted to farmland, but now commonly experiences flooding and soil erosion. So this part here, we have an area that was recently converted to farmland. So recently converted to farmland matches this feature here about disturbance. Um, unfortunately, it's going in the opposite direction. So plant communities with lots of disturbance disturbance tend to be easily colonized. So this place here, this wetland area that has a lot of disturbance, would more likely to be um, invaded by an invasive plant species, not least likely, so let's eliminate it. B says a forested area that has numerous species of plants and have received a nearly normal amount of rainfall over the last five years. So we got two things to look at, numerous species, normal amount of rainfall. So numerous species will match down if we do species diversity. But what it's telling us is that we have numerous species. So that's actually gonna make it least likely to be colonized. So this is good so far. The second part says a nearly normal amount of rainfall. So normal, nothing um, crazy about the resources, right? And again, this says that we want to have um, a place to easily colonize. We want high resource availability. Our answer choice is saying the resource availability is pretty neutral, it's pretty average. It's going to make it very likely or very easily colonized. So this one is also pretty good, right? So both of these points are good, which makes this answer choice pretty good, um, solid pick so far. C says a previously forested area that experienced a fire within the last year and currently has few species of grass. So we have this point here, a fire within the last year. That's going to correspond to the disturbance. Remember, high disturbance means likely to be invaded. Little disturbance means less likely to be invaded. So a fire within the last year has a lot of disturbance, which means that this area would be more likely to be invaded by a plant species. Moreover, this says that this area has few species of grasses and herbaceous plants growing. Down here, we're, we're told that when you have reduced species diversity, you know, not a lot of species, a place is easily colonized. We want a place that's not easily colonized. So this is not a good point. We want plenty of species, not few species. So this is wrong. This one makes this one wrong. This answer choice is out of it. The next one, D, a plains area that has experienced drought over the last seven years and has fewer species of plants than before the drought began. So here we have this part, experienced drought over the last seven years. So this would relate to resource availability. It's telling us that we have low resource availability, right? which is pretty good actually, because if you have a lot of resource availability, it's going to be easily colonized. If you have a drought, you're going to have low resource availability, so this is actually pretty good so far. That point works. Then we have this. Fewer species of plants than before the drought. Again, that's going to refer to reduced species diversity. But let's pay attention. This is saying that after the drought, we had lower species diversity. This is telling us that when we have reduced our lower species diversity, it tends to be easily colonized. So this point is actually not so good, right? So even though the first point works, the second point, no bueno meaning that this answer choice is done. Leaves us only with B for question 43, and leaves us with D for 44, and those are our answers.